death and despair. In conclusion, Madam President, many propagators of grave atrocities have protested that they were misunderstood, <coughs> that they did not mean what they said, and that their own words were taken out of context. What state would admit to a genocidal intent? Yet, the distinctive feature of this case has not been the silence as such, but the reiteration and repetition of genocidal speech throughout every sphere of state in Israel. We remind the court of the identity and authority of the genocidal inciters. The Prime Minister, the President, the Minister of Defense, the Minister of National Security, the Minister of Energy and Infrastructure, members of the Knesset, senior army officials, and foot soldiers. Genocidal utterances are therefore not out in the fringes. They are embodied in state policy. The intent to destroy is plainly understood by soldiers on the ground. It is also fully understood by some within the Israeli society, with the government facing criticism for allowing in any aid to Gaza on the basis that it is recanting on its promise to starve Palestinians. Any suggestion that Israeli officials did not mean what they said or were not fully understood by soldiers and civilians alike to mean what they said should be rejected by this court. The evidence of genocidal intent is not only chilling, it is also overwhelming and incontrovertible. Madam President, it is now my honor to request you to call 